Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today's video is gonna be a response to ethical preparedness. We recently did a video called, I think it was something along the lines of why do I not show my face in my YouTube videos. So today we're gonna to be talking about online disclosure, identity disclosure, whether or not it's a good idea. In my opinion, this is only advice. You don't have to follow it as Twin Muscle Workout would say. And I'm certainly not saying you should necessarily do what I do. Do what's right for you based on your circumstances. I am going to say from the get-go, this is really only an issue, it seems. There's, there might be more groups out there who this is an issue for, but it seems like this is only an issue with survivalists and preppers. And rightly so, let's admit it, we're a little bit more paranoid than the average person we're a little bit more vigilant when it comes to operational security. And, you know, my ex can attest to the fact that I'm as obsessed as the next prepper when it comes to making sure the house is locked down when we're not here, you know, having multiple safeguards in place, whether that's home surveillance, uh, security system, uh, Marshall, my dog, all my home defense implements, once we're inside the house, various locking systems I use, all the rest, multiple layers of security. Most YouTubers who are far, far more popular than myself or ethical preparedness show their face. Pretty much all major YouTubers show their face in some way, shape or form. There's a few who don't, who do more documentary type stuff but they do eventually show their face in some of their videos. All right, so there's several general reasons that I've come across and that I've thought about myself that preppers, survivalists, don't like putting their face out there, don't like showing all their wares off for the world. And I'm just gonna go through these real quick and we're gonna try to really understand whether or not these are real threats or whether they're mostly figments of our imagination. The government thing, that's number one. So there is a oligopoly with all the tech giants. They know all your business. Whether you put your face on here or not, you can hide behind a fake avatar and troll to your heart's content. They know who you are. They know what your spending habits are. They know everything about you. If you have a smartphone, they know your GPS coordinates, every single thing about you, probably better than you know yourself, okay? So the idea that the government is going to come and confiscate your preps after crap hits the fan, we're talking about billion dollar black budgets. I'm sorry, but your 20 year food supply is a joke, an absolute freaking joke compared to what they can put away if they want to and what they do put away. I mean, they're, they're absolutely not gonna waste the manpower and the resources uh, coming, you know, through the thicket of SHTF to come and confiscate your 20 year worth of food, your food supply. It's just not gonna happen. Now, the one exception of this might be precious metals. If you leave a paper trail that you're hoarding hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gold or silver coins, platinum, whatever, then maybe you, you, you might attract some attention if we're talking about a remake of WW2 and uh, it's a dystopian scenario where, you know, the reptilian shape-shifting gold miners are going door to door with their Gestapo jackboot thugs taking everybody's precious metals. That's one possibility of people coming to steal your preps, but they ain't coming to steal your AR-15. Maybe, you know, down the road, who knows, confiscations could always come. That's a possibility, but again, they already know who's who in that domain. Social media has told everything about you, any chat form you've ever went on, you know, lots of these big, big chat forms are easily mined by government agencies if they want to, and they have the legal backing to do it now with all these different acts and so on. So forget about it. There's no escaping that. So if that's what's pre presenting you from putting your face out there, don't even bother. But I don't think that's the main thing. The next thing a lot of preppers fear is the same thing that a lot of celebrities fear, and that's the obsessed crazy people, okay? And I legitimately say, will say crazy people, people who are just obsessed with you for whatever reason, and it's not even so much that they wanna necessarily hurt you explicitly, but it very well could come to that, 
I know survival lilies talked about, you know, having a couple stalkers and I don't know uh, how much of that is due to the fact that she's female or not. But this is something that's going to happen to any public figure or celebrity. And the overwhelming majority, I'm talking like 99.9% .9 of very big, big YouTubers show their face. Okay, they're not hiding it. It really is required if you want your channel to grow to a certain extent. So you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. It, it's you pay the cost, you know, with the paparazzi in a sense. Once you are well known, and I'm not saying I'm remotely in this class at all. I mean, I can go months and months without somebody recognizing me. Usually, oddly enough, it's when I go out of town and I'm in a different city or something, somebody will recognize me, which is weird. And for the handful of you who have recognized me, shout out to you. Uh, you know who you are. I think I met a guy at Tim Hortons once. Met somebody at West Edmonton Mall, went, met somebody at Sobeys. I can pretty much count them on one hand how many people have actually recognized me. And I have nearly 20 million views, okay? So let's just do the math on this. Uh, 20 million views, okay? Most of those views are gonna be from people who watch several videos. So let's just say there's really about, let's be generous and say there's 3 million people who've watched some of my videos. Most of those people have only watched one video, they move on to the next. Maybe a couple hundred thousand watch uh, several videos, okay? But they're not really following me with any great intrigue. They've maybe watched five, 10, 20 videos even. Uh, we boil it down, maybe we got about 10,000 avid watchers. A handful of those people are trolls. So on the average video, my like to dislike ratio is about 5% dislikes. So that means that of the 10,000 people who follow regularly, there's about 500 who don't like my videos that much. Or, you know, they, maybe they're just, uh, they're harmless trolls. Maybe about 10% of those people are crazy enough that if they seen me, they would say something. And maybe an even smaller fraction of that, we're talking like maybe a dozen people or less. And of course, all I, I know all it takes is one, I get that. Uh, and I'm being pretty conservative here with these numbers. Maybe of the, the 10 diehard people who hate my guts, uh, they're spread so far across the world that even they, as crazy as they are, know that it's not in their interest to go well out of their way. Okay, so even if one of these people Okay, and this is me, a channel 150,000 subs. Uh, ethical preparedness is around 26,000. I'm thinking maybe 2 million lifetime views, something to that effect, and growing very fast, I should say. I could see his channel pushing it to six figures any day now. Well, any month now, let's be realistic. But you never know, one viral video, that's it. So the odds of a crazy person who's close enough to me, who hates me so much that they wanna make trouble for me, that is not a coward to confront me, get past my multiple defense systems, and then have to deal with me, a father who is protecting his children, who would literally do anything to protect them. So the odds of somebody successfully doing that is incredibly low. Now I've heard it happen before where people will try to make problems for other people. They'll you know, go and talk to their employers or something like that and talk about all these videos that they're making and, you know, try to really play on that stigma of prepping that this is, you know, somebody who's a loose cannon or whatever. And that's part of the reason why you want to show your face, okay? Because it seems very weird when you don't. If you're in front of the camera and you have a mask on your face, that's what's gonna raise some red flags with people who have absolutely no concept of why you do what you do in the first place, of why you prep, but they can't at all relate to some of the fears you harbor, particularly when there's YouTubers who have channels which are a thousand times bigger than yours, who you can look their address up in a phone book. So sometimes the most obvious 
is the least obvious in that regard. You absolve yourself in your reputation by number one, rep representing yourself with dignity, which I think ethical preparedness does. I don't think anything the guy says is in any way incriminating, just like my channel, nothing I say, I think, is incriminating in any way. Of course, somebody could twist your words and all the rest and, you know, maybe question your suitability for certain positions in whatever career line of work you may have. But as long as you're keeping it professional and as long as you're not drifting too off into the political fringe, then you're probably okay in that regard. The other class of people that preppers are gonna fear are the after SHTF looters and marauders. Once again, we gotta go back to the statistics. How many people are gonna be close enough to you to that it's gonna be worth their while to venture out, come and find you and try to get past all of your defenses in order to get your food preps. It's just really, really unlikely that it's gonna happen. Now again, don't wanna show your face? That's fine, never show your face. You never have to, you can do like I do in half my videos, post pictures and talk. Really, it's, it's the substance of what you're saying which is most important. Uh, regardless, you know, one of the things when you're making YouTube videos, if you have a social media or public presence, uh, people want to see your face. They want to know who's talked to them. Most people feel they can induce what a person's like on the basis of, of how they look and their idiosyncrasies and their mannerisms, whether they're authentic or not. So people want to see that, right? Now, the last reason I can think of that somebody wouldn't want to show their face, and this is the one I could probably understand the most, is the stigma aspect. Now I know this is gonna sound contradictory to what I just said, because I just said that it makes it look and seem crazy if you're hiding your face, but only if they figure out who you are. So in that theoretical scenario I just talked about, where you have the obsessed fanatic who messages you all the time, and once you stop messaging them back, they get all frustrated and their obsession grows and grows, and they wanna make problems for you by contacting people you know or, or whatever the case might be. It's possible it can happen, it's never happened to me yet. It's almost happened in some cases, but you know, you just block those people, like whatever. You know, they're gonna move on to something else to be obsessed about for the most part. So for whatever reason, if you are worried about protecting your rep reputation for legal reasons or whatever, uh, just talk behind the camera, use a voice modulator if you want, but that, for me, is the only legitimate reason to mask up is because of the unfounded stigma of prepping. Now, I know and you know that the majority of preppers are good, hardworking people who mean nobody no harm. Obviously, there's a baddie in any bunch. You know, you can have an obsessed schoolgirl who's a fan of Justin Bieber who, you know, tries to climb through his bedroom window. You know, so, I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a fringe dude who has a bunch of guns in his basement who is a threat necessarily to somebody else. But the view of society is a little bit different than that. Not everybody accepts emergency preparedness or people who are really extreme forms of preppers who, like myself, think and have induced that, yeah, you know, there's no guarantees. People just take uh, the society for granted. I've done countless videos on this, okay? But uh, I don't think I have to go into any of that here. I, I've proven that in countless videos. Not proven, but I think I've provided pretty good explanations uh, for reasons why you should take emergency preparedness to that level of thinking really long-term for a long-term collapse scenario because nothing is guaranteed. So just a recap here. Government, don't worry about it. They already know anyways. They're not coming to take your preps after crap hits the fan. If anything, they're hiding behind uh, six foot thick steel walls and they're just hoping that you don't try to come and find them. There's the crazy people and there's the people who may want to come and steal your stuff who are so few and far between that the likelihood of that, unless you are a big, big channel, like I could see somebody like demolition ranch at some point maybe having to deal with that but i mean that guy's probably got a heavier arsenal than than most of you out there who have youtube channels 
and you know he puts his face right out there you could figure out where he lives if you wanted to i mean anybody could have access to his personal information if they really did just a little bit of digging so the fact that he's putting his face up there he's probably got a lot more stuff than you i'm not saying that just because he does it it's the best move but we get so caught up in our little personal bubbles that we really think that everybody else thinks like we do. You know, your little circle of friends is somehow a reflection of how the entire world thinks. And that's why a lot of people have criticized uh, the YouTube suggested videos because they're always suggesting videos on the basis of what you just watched. So you get caught up in this echo chamber of sorts where you're only seeing uh, perspectives which are some way aligned with your own. And the effect of that, of course, is that we get really entrenched in our ideas and we don't get exposed to alternative viewpoints, so we just assume they don't exist. And this is why I think we're seeing a greater, greater divide between the different political ends of the spectrum, but that's another video unto itself. The other idea of non-preppers watching your videos and coming to grab your stuff is also a bit delusional because non-preppers are probably people with drug problems they want stuff they can sell okay now barring your firearms which should be securely stored anyways in such a way that would at least make it much harder for them to get those even if they got onto your premises there really isn't much that preppers have that people who are stealing stuff to go and sell it for drugs are going to want they're not going to want your food they're not really going to want all your survival trinkets. I mean, they may want it for their own personal use, but how many people caught in the grips of addiction are really concerned about survival gear when they're running from house to house, trying to, trying to lift TVs and anything that, you know, has some street value nowadays. Survival gear, for the most part, doesn't. Maybe the odd knife, maybe the odd flashlight, things of that nature, but most people don't even understand what gear is good. So they might come across a knife and not even know it's a three, $400 knife. Same thing with a flashlight. They might just assume, oh, $50 flashlight. So the things that you care about are not the things that everybody else cares about, especially people who are just wanting to steal stuff to get drugs. I'm gonna conclude on this point. If you are making a YouTube channel to help people get prepared, then the idea I know some people will say, no, I want my channel to stay small. And I think that's a bunch of bullocks. Maybe there's some truth to it. But look, if you're on there making videos, you want people to watch those videos. And why would you not want more people to watch those videos? It just doesn't make sense. Why would you want to limit yourself? So if the goal is to help people, which it should be, the goal of this channel is to try to parlay whatever information I've drawn from multiple of sources and I've put through Nate Brain Filter, give it to you, hopefully it helps you in some way, shape or form. That should be the goal of what you're doing to make a YouTube channel. Maybe some of you are just doing it to make money, whatever. That's your prerogative. So if that's the case, how do you best achieve that? You're not going to achieve mass appeal if you're wearing a mask in front of a screen. That's just my belief. Maybe you can, you know, you could be like the guy, Tim the Toolman, Taylor's neighbor, who, you know, you never see all of his face, <laughs> that kind of angle. You know, some bands, like one of my favorite bands, Tool, for the longest time, you never really seen their faces at all. There was that mystique about them, which was an allure to people. Some people would be able to get away with that for a long time. But in this genre, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's going to hold out too well. I think your best bet in trying to spread your message to the most amount of people is to come on the screen, show who you are. You, me, anybody who's involved in emergency preparedness and survival, we have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. I can sit there and have a conversation with somebody who may not uh, be a prepper or a survivalist, and I can give them some very good reasons as to why they might want to look at putting some of their time and resources into this stuff. Uh, but most of the people who I work with, I think most of them by now probably know I have a YouTube channel, but it's nothing we really talk about. It's something, you know, I keep on the down low. 
And as long as you're not saying anything which is too out there, and I genuinely don't harbor any out there beliefs, so I don't have to worry about that, you know? The only thing I'm concerned about is the social stigma. Yes, explaining why you're a prepper gets a little tiresome after a while. Man, you'd be surprised at how few people actually will know you're a prepper, even if you have millions and millions of views. It's very rare I'll ever get recognized. And I'm out there quite a bit. You know, I'm out and about doing a lot of stuff all day, running errands in a variety of different places. I live in a sizable city. I don't, I think I've seen one or two people in the city. I'm sure people have recognized me. Oh, and that's another thing. If you do recognize me, just come say hello. Don't be taking pictures from like across the room. I think I had that happen once where somebody was doing that and I'm pretty sure it's because they, you know, him and his buddy there were like, hey, that's Canadian prepper. And you know what, I'm not, I'm not a celebrity, man. I'm just an average dude with 140,000 subs from all over the world, which is a real, real drop in the bucket when it comes to the extent of human populations. So let's just keep it real. So in short, my advice is if you want to spread your message to the greatest amount of people, get in front of the camera, have no shame. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Sorry to be so long-winded. Canadian Prepper out.